it's just the three. No, we can, we can do the same one in two story. It's just this gives more, you know, open space. It's really what it does. You're going to have block walls around each property. Block walls, you know, con uh, concrete block walls <clears throat> on each property. Cinder um, block. You know, we haven't done a wall plan yet. It's not, it's not required, and I, I don't think we would ever put a, a wall down at the bottom. At the so that means that uh, the owners of the different properties, they could put a chain link fence, a wooden fence. There's going to be any control over what kind of uh, yeah, that's, aesthetics. That's a good question. We can have a rule in the maintenance association as to what kind of fence it could be. Iron, you know, there's all yeah. kinds of ways that yeah. some people may not like at all. Yeah. yeah. So, we haven't really gone that far Because everything's going to be walls. new, you know, and modern. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't really gone that far with the walls. But, I mean, I think there would be some. I, I just don't exactly know. One thing I can tell you, we were not planning to gate it like a fortress and have it as a gated community. That was not the plan up front. Um, although I have heard from a lot of people that they would want to buy here and have it as a gated community. But that, that was not our plan to do a gate. And there you were doing like a perimeter wall and stuff, and it just it kind of has that different closed off look. So I'm going to just write down um, uh, lock walls. So you're going to have any fencing at all on any perimeters? Um, any type we're, of fencing? We're, we're not planning right now any fencing along Eastern. So basically the, the slope would come down and it would be planted and irrigated. And oh gosh, you know, let me mention about the irrigation. One of the things we learned about that we're going to do here um, with regard to the landscape irrigation is recycling, a water recycling technology where all the water that hits this site will be captured through a series of drains and channels and directed to a couple locations. One might be um, here, another one might be here. And they'll be contained in a cistern, which is a technical word for a tank, an underground tank. And then there'll be a sump pump, which is a water pump, to pump the water back up throughout the entire site so that all the um, irrigation will be come from... Uh, I don't know if you haven't been around here lately, but there hasn't been much water. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fantastic. I, I can tell you, my children, <laughs> who, are, who are big environmentalists, as am I, um, have mentioned that to me. <laughs> and I'm very well aware of it. But if you go back a few more years, you remember El Nino, we all had a little bit too much rain. So it, it's just, you know, this is kind of plan in terms of how long it is. That's a great feature right there. So that's where yeah. contrary to what someone else said, we don't want to drive you out. We want that place yeah. developed, but in the right size and proportion to what's existing. Yeah. That's all. Not over here, right? That's all. Right. You know, yeah. I'm concerned with Questions. the security. Excuse me. Questions. Someone else here has questions. a question. Well, you talk a lot no, Melissa and, and Esmeralda. Oh, you talk a lot without okay. being recognized. Yeah, this young lady has a meeting. Thank you. Okay. Okay. What do you mean, okay? She's next. Yeah, great question. Okay, so the question is, you're talking about like in our in our building, what, what's going to be green about in it? In your building, but also in maintaining the like, whatever yeah, okay. yeah, okay. So, so let, let me just share just a few thoughts. Okay, again, so it's all preliminary, and I'm I'm in a process of trying to learn more about it myself. But one, there's there's you know what we call native species of plants and trees that would naturally exist in a in, a, in an area, and then we have invasive species. Okay. And we have protected trees, okay? And we have low water required trees and shrubs. So we kind of kind of throw all that into the mix. And so when I look at that site, like there's a lot of vegetation. A lot of it is great. I mean, there's some really big mature trees of different species that we would want to keep. But we want to keep everything. Because if we take a tree out, you know, we essentially are going to replace it. So, I mean, it's like a 2x cost, right? I got to pay to remove it, and I got to pay to put it back. So every tree we can keep is important, so long as it's a tree that makes sense to be there. If it's diseased, and I'm not saying it is, but if it were diseased or something, if the city says, well, you have to have a drainage, you can't. I forget I can't do this at home. They will, because you have to, 
conduct water, and if the trees are in the way of the drainage channel, you know, they're going to either move the drainage channel or move the trees. So you kind of work in that balance. And so it's our goal to keep as many as possible. What, what we do, and we, we did like a preliminary tree survey, but we end up hiring an arborist. This is a person who's an expert in this. We're going to go out and survey, and we'll catalog every single tree, species, the diagram, everything. If, is anything like uh, protective? If it's a protected tree, and I don't believe there's a protected tree, <coughs> you can't touch like a oak or something. There is. There are walnuts. Black. Well, but that's Maybe. not oak. The walnuts. Well, yeah, but I think you can't touch the the oak. The walnuts, I believe, but I'm not 100. percent I believe if you remove it, you have to replace it with four other ones. A four to one replacement. I've, I'm not an engineer, and I'm not even the person most knowledgeable in my company about that. But we don't want to be removing walnuts at a cost and then having to replace them with four walnuts. So the goal is to leave as much as possible, create as much green space and screening as possible. So the end result is that there isn't an enormous difference from what it is, you know, today. I mean, it's going to be different. But I mean, you know, we want to keep, I mean, a lot of these slopes, like, much of this is really, you know, stays in the interior. There's a lot of trees that don't remain. We're going to look at what, what could be moved on site and things like that. So we're really conscious of that. So that's like with the, the trees of vegetation. And we talked about the irrigation. And then the maintenance association is just going to be a third party company that manages a landscape contractor that would care for the plants and trees. Okay, we want to pay attention to all these things. As far as the building technology... I have a question for you. Well, one second. Okay. Um, so, so as far as the building, um, you know, we haven't done architectural plans and we haven't done specifications. But one of the things we look at are what, like, what can we do that's, you know, water conserving and energy conserving. So typically in our developments we'll have all the appliances are energy star, all the water fixtures will have low flow restrictions on it. Um, this may be a, a good opportunity to do what they call tankless water heaters. They hang on the wall and you don't have the big um, uh, conventional old style water heater that's perpetually heating 50 or 75 gallons typically. Um, roofing materials would be, and, and insulation would be such that you're really highly insulated. As kind of a company policy, we typically go beyond code. But, but I can mention to you just nationally, you know, one other state, Colorado, and but, but just in turn and just being in conferences and things, most of the other states in our country have far lower restrictions and regulations than we do in California. And so just even building some codes, it's doing nothing else to do the bare minimum that's required. And, and there's a whole body of law that it's done. You have to hire a special engineer to calculate all this stuff and then it's presented to the city engineer and the whole process kind of beyond us just people talk. I'll answer you. Thank you. So um, just the basic is pretty advanced and, 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 and it's, it's really very good. Now one thing what my um, older son is really into his team, everybody's really into environmental science was talking to me about this gray water research. I don't really know if you can do it. I don't see that it allows it. Uh, but we're going to look at it. It sounds really interesting to take. They, they're doing it in other countries like in Singapore Airport is done, where you take water from the sinks and showers, and it gets recirculated into the toilet. Habitat homes are doing that now. I don't, I don't know if they allow it. So people wash their cars in the street, all that water gets conducted to our water recycling. Yes, that's correct. Is that, is that right? Okay. Thank you. Uh, just to piggyback on what this young lady is saying, habitat homes that we have in this country, it's already addressing that problem in the states where that's allowed. The new homes that they're building for people and people are involved in their own homes and building them, yeah. they already have all that green okay. stuff. But what I wanted to bring up, which even though I'm for this project 100%, one thing that concerns me a great deal is the security 
of all those 40-some people you're going to have, that they're going to be wealthy people who afford that stuff in the first place, what's going to be the security for them? Because in a lot of communities in this city, we have a strong population of homeless. What's going to keep those homeless that we have here in this community from going up there and, 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 and invading those people's property, those rich people's property, they're going to have a whole bunch of nice How things. How dare they? How dare they? Uh, but, uh, but uh, it's reality. Uh, you're concerned for the rich. It. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> it's, it's reality. What are we going what, what, what to do to keep uh, security yes, for those people in that community sorry, I'm and keep those people That's out offensive, of Ruben. I, you know, uh, oh, but it's true. I'm sorry, uh, I haven't offensive. spoken, but I would like to say something. Uh, I hope that they are safe, but I live here. Right. I'm a property owner here in El Sereno, and I wish you had said something about us who do live here and yeah. our security. That can be addressed on the different I'm conversation. Sure. Uh -huh. We're talking about the no, hill and that no. security I'm, of the I'm hill. sorry, no, but I don't think so. Their security is no more important than my security. Of course, I agree. I agree. But no, that's no, not the issue. Tom, the is, issue is you got to look at it at his point of view. Hold on. I'm going to back you up right here. you got to look at it at his point of view. He's going to buy and rent right here. Uh, that's what he's looking uh, at. He wants to rent one of these. Even if that was the case, it's still they need to secure. Yeah, he needs your to security is very legitimate. You're, 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 you're very not legitimate. concerned about us. No. He needs his okay. okay, but that isn't the issue. Yeah. The rest okay. of LA 32 is not the issue. Only that's the issue tonight. You're very right on what you're saying, young lady. Extremely right. Okay. But we do so, have a problem here. So, so how do we deal with this? Hi, George. Same, same way. Got a jerk you are. Ah, you too, muy santo. Hi, George. As a developer, you know, <laughs> yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. You know, Montoya is able to provide security. Yeah. But, exactly. you know, all the homes are going to have, you know, locks and deadbolts and locking windows, of course. <laughs> yeah, doors and windows. Hi, George. Hi, Security for the rich. Don't write that. So... You know, the, the, the one other thing was the gate, but we kind of thought about that and didn't really think that was something that, that I think overall people would want is a security gate. And I also personally don't think that those really prevent that much. If somebody wants to get in, they're going to get over the fence. Or, or exactly. Oh, that's a good Yeah, overall Irish Sorry about that. Thanks for pointing that out. If I didn't, if there's something else that anybody said that I didn't write down, just let me know. Yes, sir. How many bedrooms are you looking at in some of these? Well, we have a sort of the architecture, but our thought was, you know, three to four bedrooms plus a den. I'm looking online, and you have very nice houses on your property. Oh, thank you. Water communities. Thank you. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, this might be a question to some people, but I'm just curious. They're all going to look the same? Well, no. They're going to look similar because, you know, they're houses, but, I mean, each, I mean, I mean, you've been, if you, if you you've do, been up to the... It's okay. like every third it's, house is the same one, Right, maybe? up there by, like, be, in between South Cass and Highland Park, what's that, like, Oak Hill, right? Oh, yeah, Where they have all yeah. those Press really from? close together oh, houses. Oh, yeah. And they're nice houses, but very small, but yeah. not so small. And they well, all look the same? Well, it, I'm through you. You know, it's an interesting <laughs> point. What, we don't want them to look the same. We don't want them to look like a subdivision. We don't want them to look cookie cutter. We don't want them to look like, you know, just someone came in and just plopped down 43 the identical thing. So what we tend to have are different floor plans and different elevations. So for 43, well, actually we're going to have a fair number of different plans because the topography, some of them, a lot of them, most of them actually sit on the flat land. I guess some of them, be yeah, so some are going like that. And then, you know, the style itself of the, the motif, you know, you, you tend to have, you know, two or three different, what they call elevations, how, how it looks. Is it Spanish, craftsman? Cottage, contemporary, modern. I mean, there's those kind of things. We haven't really gone that far in terms of what that would be. But and I, a really important concept is I can make it look beautiful. Like it looks really nice. Yeah. And that's the goal. We hired, you know, we think a really good architect. Uh, we've used them before, and um, that is definitely one of the things. And one of the things, Melissa, you told me, like um, probably the second time we talked, was you know walk around the area and try to understand. Well, what's, what's the architectural style here in El Sereno? 
And so I've, d I've done that. <laughs> and I've actually made our architect do it with me because I'm not an architect. We end up hiring all sorts of people to help guide us, right? So we're just more like the leader, not. So we walked around and trying to like, figure out okay, what is, the, and, and what we found there isn't necessarily the predominant architectural stuff yeah, that we've seen. Yeah, there's, you know, right, there's different, some kind of Spanish and some kind of a Liverpool modern, things like that. So, you know, there's, there's, you know, some opportunity to do something that really looks great. And, you know, when you do something that's great, that, that people like and that sells and Pride of ownership. Well, yeah, it, but it also raises the property values of everybody else. It improves that. And, and, and so, I mean, our goal is to create, you know, something that's really nice because we want to sell it. We want people to be excited. We want 10 buyers for every house, you know, so that, I mean, but, but if you do something really blah, really boring, and it's just cookie cutter, I mean, I would be afraid that our home buyers would think just like what you're thinking. So that's exactly what's really important to us is having great art. Okay, yes. I, you know, I've heard a couple times you mentioned and maybe some other people mentioned the impact on, on property values. Bringing a master plan community into our existing community will raise everyone's property values. Yes. And I'd like to just point out, I think we've all witnessed on our various blocks that homes are purchased, flipped, improved, and new homeowners move in and, and add to our existing communities. We've seen property values raised because of that. So on my own block, we had a property that sold for almost 100000 over asking, and it came in high and asking. And this was a very small, very beautiful but flipped property. So I'd just like to point out, you keep stressing that it's going to improve our property values. And I'd like to remind everyone, we don't need a master plan community to improve all the new property values. Our property values are improving block by block. Beautifying our existing community and improving our existing community within what we have established, established already. I think I think one thing El Serena has going for it, it has long term residence. Yeah. Low density. Long, yes. Long term oh, yeah, long term residence. I've oh. been in the same house. I mean I'm obviously I'm one of the young ones. Yeah. I've been in that same house since eighty four. Eighty four. And I'm sure I'm one of the young ones. Everybody around me other than my next door neighbor have been there longer than I have. Yeah. Multi-generational community, and many of us want our children to also be able to purchase homes in El Serena. Mm -hmm. And there is some concern about people not being able to purchase now if they exist in the market. Because I know the prices are going up. And they're, they're high because very few homes, if you notice, are for sale in our community. I'm saying actually, yeah. Angel, a well, lot you know, of yeah, they, yeah. Well, yeah. what, what you're talking about is, is generally what's going on in a lot of most, most areas in California because of, of, of all sorts of reasons, you know, regulation and, and this and that. Um, you know, not enough homes have, have been built. Okay. There's there's net population growth in our state. Okay, that means that, that just by the numbers, there's there's more people here, and it's continuing to grow. People are living longer, and more babies are being born, and more people are moving in, and even though some people are moving out, if you if you look. And I, I think part of that problem is that they need somewhere to go, so they put them where there were no people living. Good example, <laughs> the industrial lofts downtown. They're great. They cleaned up the neighborhood, but now the congestion is so much more worse. If they used to be warehouses, now they have several hundred people living in one building. Now they're coming to El Torino. And they're not cheap. Yeah. But, you know, regardless of the price, it's the amount of yeah. people that... The property values will increase even if there are 20 homes. It doesn't have to be 40 homes. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. if there are 10 homes, it's going to increase. Yeah. If there's no homes. The primary reason we're doing right. is not to increase yeah. the property yeah. value. Yeah. That, that was you. the point of my statement. I was just saying that, in general, you know, when you, you know, build in an area, it tends to improve the overall area. Other benefits that happen are, like, one, you know, it beautifies that whole Okay. Landscape, maintain, you know, the trash, 
There's a piece of land out here. You can barely see it. It's a triangle piece. It's owned by the city. That's a mess. And that's where the taco guy operates on public land. There's been discussion to get rid of him, but apparently he can just operate there. And then it creates trash. And, and I've seen, uh, he has a trash pail, but you know, I don't know, it blows out. I don't know what happens. But it, it creates a mess. And so one of the things that we um, agreed to do is, even though we don't own that little piece, is we'll um, landscape it and irrigate it and take over the maintenance of it in perpetuity. And he'll come anyway. Then. Well, no, because we would plant it so you can't. You know, we would create something. I mean, we could even put, if we all wanted, some kind of signage. You know, it could be a sign. Then. About El Serino. Or whatever, but I mean, we could create it because I realized that that's an issue with that guy. I've heard it a lot. That's something that that we're we're doing. Okay, um, so I'm gonna put the uh, triangular piece. As long as he sells tacos, he'll be there. People, you gotta get people to stop buying his tacos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that. I've eaten his tacos and they're delicious. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna tell you. Oh, so Dan, Dan, quick yeah. question. Yes. What's right. the lowest number of homes? That you're, I mean, 43 is, is I think, a, a, a lot, a uh, large number for that area. You've heard it. You've heard it here. What's the lowest you're willing to go to build on that lot? What, what's, what's the lowest number you, you, that you consider? Besides 43, 43 is your number right now, but what, how low can you go? They're going to hang you if you answer 10. <laughs> you know, I, that, that is essentially our plan. 43? Is, is 43. Mm -hmm. it, it's not a negotiating tactic. Um, we feel it works, but we want to, again, take all the concepts, try to address everything we can, and we may kind of come to a point where it will say, hey, you know, we, we're opposed to that number. By right, there is a number of 35, you know, and you would just basically probably pluck out the eight worst homes that are on that board and just not build them because you can't. Okay. At this point, we're, we're again, we're exploring it, but, but I, I hear you on, on the density. Yeah. So I, I do very, I think, so I, I appreciate you saying that, and I understand. I hear you. So, uh, um, what, what's okay, it's 815. I have another question. You, you have a question? Quick question, I don't know if you have this. Um, from the time that you start building to the time that you stop <laughs> while officially calling on is that with trusts and grading and noise and uh, yeah, you know, part of it depends. Well, well, you can work. I think I say the, the initial grading oh, yeah. process. I don't know exactly, to be honest with you. I, I don't have to share it. But I would say it's going to be at least a month or two of dirt haul off. During the day, during the night? Yeah, during the day. When I talk to the school, one thing I said to them, I've got to imagine that doing, having any like equipment during school drop off and school pickup would be, you know, really difficult. So one thing we could do is, you know, promise and agree to make sure that we don't have that going on. Um, during the drop off pickup, and, and then the school, um, Dr. Gibson or um, Ms. Garcia would, would, they're going to just kind of, I don't know what the times are, but whatever, around 8 to 3. And then we know that we wouldn't have equipment there. The, the, another thing, too, by the way, is that the site's big enough where we can actually do a lot of stuff on site, and I don't really think we have any real stage or anything in the road. Because you, cause, I mean, when you're doing infill, I mean, just big picture, you know, you can build in suburbia, right, up in the Empire, North San Diego County and things. But a lot of people object to that. It's called urban sprawl. There's an article like every other week in the Times about urban sprawl. What are we doing that for? We need to revitalize our cities where we have 50 plus and you hear that, George? homes and they're falling down and, you know, we need to get more you. because we have more people. We just have more people. So look at the population in all of our lifetimes in the world. I think we've got to like, when we were all little kids, and I'm sure some of you are younger than me, there was like 4 billion people in the world. There's like, there like 6 and a half billion people, 7 billion people in the world. Now obviously, it seems like they're all here, but they're all over the world. I mean, so we have this population growth being built out in the sprawl, but then why are we always all in this? It's a whole other topic, but, you know, so there's like, don't build out there because, you know, 
creates a mess, and then jobs are here, and people are driving, and they're wasting resources, and we're adding a smog environment, clogging up the freeways. Then we come in here and build, and say, well, you know, don't you serve the old? And, you know, so it's always like a balance. We're trying to work all this stuff. But to answer your question, I think the dirt hog part is not that long. I think the overall grading is probably about six months. And I think home construction, when you build a phase of homes, it probably takes about four to five months. It's taking longer because you know, things are getting a little busier and a lot of stuff's gone out of business and so there's a lack of labor. It's another good thing when you build is you can create a lot of jobs. There's a lot of big ripple out there in housing where all sorts of businesses are, are benefiting. But, you know, you probably build it in, I, I'd just be making it up. Overall, you know, home communities, let's say if it sells, you know, one a week or a month, it might sell in 10 months. So maybe the whole thing is a couple years. But it could be longer. You know, if you have a really heavy rainy season while you're doing grading, you can lose time. If there's labor and show shortages, one time, like all this um, plywood got shipped over about places to Iraq. And there was like a big shortage of plywood. Another time there was a shortage of um, insulation. And there was like allocation. I remember like they lined up for uh, gas in the 70s. Like, okay, well, there's an allocation on engineering building. So, you know, we don't control any of these things. It's just to go to go and buy. So, you know, labor's constrained. And then the market. If the market's good, we're selling We're going to build as quickly as possible. You know, if, it's, if there's a big demand, you want to build maybe half and then another half. You know, if the market's got a week, you might need to go slower. The bank will control that too. Believe me, as a developer, we have a lot of people that control us and answer to us. You know, bank, market, resident. But all the agencies, we're an extremely highly regulated business. I and mean, we're answering to federal, state, city, regional, county, all these utilities. Everybody, we've got a lot of people telling us this. Yes. Yeah, can you tell us about the funds that's going to be directed to the rec center? Yeah. Um, well, that's a positive thing. Okay, so as a developer, we pay these what are called impact fees. One of them is for parks. And I know, Melissa, you were concerned about parks. And I took your thought to heart, and someone else had talked to me about it. So I didn't talk to you. Hey, why don't I have a park? Well, we have asked God to have a park. We have El Serino Rec Center. A re uh, regional park. Well, when we go to build, we're going to be required to pay fees. And right now the fees are three thousand dollars a house, so we multiply it out about one hundred thirty dollars, one hundred twenty-nine dollars. Okay. So, my experience for twenty-five years doing this is pay these fees, and then you never kind of really see anything. And I've never seen any anybody build a park. To be honest with you, I built parks before in the larger projects, but I've never seen. Anybody, we just pay these fees and where's it up? So I just got to thinking about it. And after our conversation, when I had a meeting with a council member, I, I, I just asked, you know, council member, I said, do you have the authority <clears throat> to direct fees that we pay to be spent right here in El Serino real time when we're doing this project? And he said, you know, no one's asked me that. Let me check. Let me check. And he said, yes. Are you sure? Are you sure we can do that? And he said, yeah. And then a couple weeks later, I said, hey, you know, we're going to kind of start our outreach. And I don't want to be saying this, you know, if it's not true. But it, it was confirmed to us true. So we're going to pay these fees. It's going to get earmarked. And it's going to be spent right here in El Serino. You know, presumably in the El Serino uh, Regional Park for capital improvements, not maintenance. And so one of the things to start thinking about and exploring is what are we going to do in the park? Now, I don't have a personal stake in exactly what. I don't have like a vision. Oh, it should be a top lot or a shade structure or bathrooms or anything of that sort. But it could be something. And I think it would be very interesting to create something and have something built that benefits the entire community. So money, you know, real money that we're paying when we do this goes into that park. You know, I'm curious in terms of about uh, all of these homes, however cheap they are, they're going to all be high end, and I don't have a problem with them. What I am concerned with, if your project is going to qualify for a certain 
federal program because now little money fight you try to get it now you, you can buy house with 99 percent financing that's forget the five percent that used to exist you can buy a house with 99 percent financing even though these are high end okay do you know but, if you're going to be any special programs for those people that can't afford it still uh what do they call it special when it's low income yeah Okay, let, let, let me ask you. So let's be like really clear. We are not a low-income housing builder. We don't use public high money. End. We don't use federal money. We don't use state money. We, we have no money from everybody. It's all our own money. Okay, bank money. No, I mean for the buyers, not okay. I mean you okay. as the developers. Let me just fully answer. So this is not hey, a, with you. This has nothing to do with income or subsidized housing. This is all pure market rate. Okay, so it's market rate housing. We are not a lender, we're not a mortgage company, we don't do that. Oh. There's laws that keep us completely separate. There will be lenders who will make loans. I'm not exactly sure what loan product you're talking about. One that exists is the FHA, and that allows for 3.5% down. There's the VA loan, that's like maybe 1%, right, mostly zero. So there's, those are two programs that exist through the government. Those are nothing to invest. When people qualify, they can buy homes. But I wasn't easily. referring to any of that, sir. Okay. Like I said, there, you can buy a home today with 99% financing. But he doesn't have control over the financing. Nor does the other people, but um, I'm just curious if they're going to be involved in anything like that to help people move into those places. Well, there's all these rules. Like, we, we, we can't be a lender. And be involved in that. I'm not referring to that at all. So, I mean, typically what, what we would do is interview a number of lenders before we open. Might be Bank of America, Wells Fargo, or, I don't know, it's like other, other companies. Figure out who's going to be there. Who you know, like a program they have for first time buyers. Right. There's a lot of programs for them yeah. to help them get and into a home just like yours. We, we, we will pick a lender who we think is going to be, you know, honest and hardworking, is going to do a great job. And they're there and available, but we, we we don't require and we can't require buyers to use anyone. We can really use any lender that they can get a loan from to us as long as we get, you know, the, we sell the house and they pay for it, the money comes in and it's done. Yeah, so people pay cash, so people get loans, so we get this kind of loan. We don't have any special, like, financing. We don't carry paper, we, we don't do it. 